All right, happy hump day. We're at the sawmill. We're going to take some grease out of this bearing here and uh, see if that does anything. I'm not exactly sure it will. Not everyone's convinced, but let's give it a shot. Yeah, yep. So Al, yesterday this one was 117 very quickly. This one was room temperature. This one now on the outside is running warmer. So maybe there was something to clean the grease out. We're gonna, I don't know, you know what I mean? It can't hurt. Oh, it's all dripping out now, that's cool. Well, that's a good thing, I think, right? I mean, it's free. I know. It's only five bucks a gallon. Oh, that's interesting. So what do you what do you guys think? Just um what do you think? What do you think? I'll run it a little bit more, put some more kerosene in it, let it run longer. That's coming up pretty clean. I guess the way to find out, the way to find out, but it's work is what we did is we loosened these guys up yeah. and when you spin this, see how much friction there was. There was a lot of friction yesterday. Oh, okay. Because it was, and it was grease type friction. It wasn't a, a bearing that was... Stuck or... Yeah, yeah. It was just slaw, slaw Yeah. Down. I'm inclined to let it run a little bit more. Well, that's fine, let it run. Yeah, let me, what do you, what do you think? Worst case scenario, put more grease in it. Just see if the temperature changes. Yeah. This says diesel, is that okay? So, um, it's probably close to kerosene. Yeah. <laughs> it's kerosene-ish. It's, it's, anyway, right? it's a, yes, I believe, that, I believe it's a, yes, yes, uh, yes, and off-road diesel, because they don't pay the taxes on it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to do the back, or the, I got the back. So just a quick explanation. What Alan's doing is he's putting some diesel fuel, a.k.a. kerosene, into my little pressure pot. And that little thing I've got there is actually used for pressure bleeding hydraulic brake systems on cars and trucks. It works swimmingly well. So I made up an adapter which fits into the Zerk fitting. And this way I can pump kerosene into the bearing, you know, pretty aggressively. So we pumped in several gallons of it. And it's interesting, a lot of garbage came out, a lot of dirty stuff came out of it. Does it help any? I'm not sure. Certainly can't hurt. But now we've got to re-grease it. But that's what we're doing here. So I'm thinking, let me start it up. Let's start it up and run it some more and just see what happens, right? You want to pump it up? Because uh, I don't. I don't. Yeah. You want to pump it? I don't. Well, it's got, it's I really don't know. I don't know. I don't know it's anything. It yeah. Let it, Let's let it run a little bit with the kerosene that's in there, and then push some, yeah, flush it out. Yeah. It's kind of what I'm thinking. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I know. Yeah, Trust me. All right. So what we got here? This is brilliant. Use a little pressure tank for bleeding brakes. We're pumping kerosene in. We already put half gallon in, I bet. And uh, a lot of dirty crap came out of it. And now we're going to run it some more and see what happens. What do we? What do we know? What's that? It's not, it's colder than the other one. It's 71 or, yeah, it's not, it's happy, I believe. But now the question, yeah. it's 76 and that one's 85. Oh, you know what, that, that kerosene's just running right out of there. And I assume it's built so it'll just run out, you know, and actually let me unplug this thing because otherwise it's going to keep running out, right? Um, you know what I mean? My dad's, one of my dad's friends used to work for Luby Chevrolet. They were in Baltimore, Luby oh, Trucking. Oh, yeah. He could work on a vehicle, and he was dressed to the, you know what I mean, very well. And like, 
he's not even dirty. He changed the transmission. Like, how are you so clean? And I, like, look at something and, like, yeah. freaking grease is all over me. And, like, <laughs> hi, yeah, yeah. I remember I, when I was young, I worked in the press room in the newspaper. Uh-huh. And, of course, that's where all the ink and everything, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> this one pressman, I used to get a kick out of him. But I, I, and I knew him really well. He'd come to work and he'd go fine. Dirty. He'd put it all over himself like he'd been working his ass Perfect. And then she told me the lady is and said, just do that because they, they leave me alone. You haven't been doing anything. Right, right. So the camera's in a bad spot here, but what I'm doing is my little pressure pot, I'm pumping it up to increase the pressure and shoot some more kerosene inside this bearing. And you can see the tube there that goes into the Zerk fitting. And what you also see is all of the moisture, it's kerosene, on the husk of the sawmill because it's squirting out those two bearing ends, which I guess means we're kind of succeeding here at cleaning this thing out. So it's kind of a messy job, though, because you do it when the motor is running, the bearings are spinning, and, uh, of course, it goes flying everywhere. Hold on a second. Coming up on the left hand side of that hub. Over here? They have coming out of the bottom. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. It looked like it looked like looked like smoke or vapor. Probably vapor. Yeah, the fumes from the bottle have been through the system. Yeah. Pushing air. Yeah. It was it was pushing air out, I think it was bubbling out. All right, well, thanks for watching another episode of Wayne's World Garage. I believe by loosening the large bolt, which holds the saddle on, and cleaning the bearing out, we've made some difference here. We'll see. We've got a couple more changes to make this week. We're going to fix the uh, MacGyvered, you know, bearing saddle support in the back, and we're going to true up the fast collar before we put the saw back on. Optimistically, in a day or two, we'll have this thing back up and running and sawing logs again. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.